Hi, I'm here to talk to you today about server-side source control and Visual Studio Code and how some of the things you may be familiar with from Studio map to our new object script plugin for Visual Studio Code. My name is Timothy Levitt. I'm a development manager in application services at InterSystems, and I've been excited to be adopting Visual Studio Code with my team, which is really a large established team building applications on InterSystems platforms, and we have a lot of processes that we're used to with that, and it's been interesting to see how those translate to Visual Studio Code. So today we'll talk about server-side source control configuration using the processes we use as an example, and how you use server-side source control from Visual Studio Code. Coming out of this, you should be able to better understand how to adopt Visual Studio Code for object script development and establish projects, and how to know how to do in Visual Studio Code what you already do in Studio. So this presentation may not be for you if you are not already using server-side source control hooks. If you're not using any sort of source control, then I'd recommend listening anyway and tuning into some other presentations related to that. Our key takeaway is that a development team using server-side source control hooks can adopt Visual Studio Code for object script development without changing their repository format or having to switch to a more client-centric model. To provide a little bit of background for those who may not have used server-side source control or may not know the context for this, the older approach for um, doing source control in object script with Studio is through a Studio extension mechanism, where there are these subclasses of percent .base that run in response to various editor events on the server. And these are really intended for shared development environments. So this isn't as much each developer has their own instance, their own workspace where they have all their code, where there's a clear mapping there. This is more when there is a large team using a single development environment and sharing that because it's either difficult or time consuming or for security reasons. There are a number of reasons why you would want to share a development environment. For this purpose, there are hooks available in the community for Git, for SVN, and there's also Deltanji by George James Software, and that's um, just another option out there for doing this source control directly in a database and InterSystems platforms. The specifics of choosing a source control strategy are out of scope for this presentation. My manager, Ben Speed, has a whole presentation on that that I would recommend if you haven't decided on your source control strategy or if you've kind of had in the back of your mind that you should be using source control for a while but haven't gotten around to it yet. It really is risky to be developing directly in production or deploying to production without controls around this. So I would really advise looking into source control one way or another if you haven't adopted it to protect your code. So we'll start out with some discussion and a demo of how to configure source control. And we'll just use as an example the class percent studio.sourcecontrol.isc, which is what we use for our own internal development processes at InterSystems in application services, health share development, database platforms, et cetera. So um, the first step is going to the management portal in system administration, configuration, additional settings, and then to source control through those menus. You pick your namespace of interest and uh, you select the source control class that you want to use, the extension that will be enabled for editor events in that namespace. In every case for any of these extensions, there's some more configuration that's needed after that. In the case of %studio.sourcecontrol.isc, and this is probably representative of what other extensions would look like as well, you need to provide some information about where on disk the files that you're editing should be exported. So really, this is taking the files that are in the database as classes, routines, and saying the source of truth is what's on the file system instead. And that source of truth on the file system could be controlled by Git or Perforce, et cetera. Um, so in this example, I'd set the um, percent sys source control shared workspace global to my Perforce workspace name. In this case, I'm using tlevit underscore summit 2020, but that would be your Perforce workspace name. Set the sources global top level node to a file or a folder somewhere on, on disk. And then set the 
CLS comma star subscript of sources to a folder within that. And you can also see this back tick at the end, and you'll see this in the demo. And that means that the sources will be exported as UDL. So we'll just go into a demo now of this configuration. For my first demonstration, I'll show you how to set up server-side source control in a namespace of an Iris instance. So you can see my management portal here. I'll go to System Administration, then Configuration, then Additional Settings, then Source Control. I'll pick the namespace I want to enable Source Control for, in this case Virtual Summit, and I'll pick the Source Control class name that I want to use. You can find a number of these out on the community for working with Git, with SVN. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate %studio.sourcecontrol.isc, which works with Perforce. Um, you can, you can use what's most appropriate for your project, of course, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use this source control class, which interacts with Perforce. So I'll click Save, and that's now enabled the source control class for the namespace. For this particular extension, and really for any extension, there will be a little bit more configuration needed as well. And this is typically just done through some globals that will be documented in conjunction with the extension you're using. In, in this case, the first thing I need to do is set a global to say what perforce workspace on the local machine I want to use. So I'll set percent sys source control shared workspace equal to tlevit summit 2020, which is the name of a perforce workspace I've defined on my machine. I also need to say where on disk all of the sources from this namespace should go. And this, is, this needs to be a directory within the root directory for the Perforce workspace I've just defined. In this case, it's really simple. My root directory for the Perforce workspace is what I'm going to use, and it's C virtual summit. So I'll set sources with a capital S equal to C virtual summit. And the last thing I need to do is say, within this directory, how do I want to map different classes, or routines, or CSP files, or include files, etc. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'll demonstrate with classes. I'll set caret sources CLS, the extension, and then I'll say star to say, by default, all classes will go to this place. And I'll set that equal to CLS with a slash to say it's a folder, and then I'm also going to add a backtick, which will tell it to export in UDL format rather than XML. Similarly, I'm going to add a slightly different mapping for unit tests. So I'll have those go to internal slash testing slash unit tests. And that's all. At this point, I'm configured to use Perforce for server-side source control, and I will be able to do that through both VS Code and Studio, as you will see shortly. Now that we've configured source control for a namespace, we can look and see how it actually works in both Studio and VS Code. The short of it is it's pretty much the same. The menus that are kind of key to many source control implementations can be run through the command palette in VS Code, or also by right-clicking in a folder for a uh, project using ISFS, which is a a way of enabling kind of natural server-side editing in a folder structure alongside other folders on the client. And you can also right-click in a document that you're editing in VS Code and see the menus that way. So let's see this in action. For my second demo, I'll walk through parallel processes for creating a class, adding it to source control, submitting it, checking it out again, making some changes, and then reverting those changes. And I'll go through this process in Studio first, and then talk through the parallel process in VS Code. And we'll just see how things line up in terms of some of the options there. So starting out in Studio, I'll create a new class. We'll call it virtualsummit.demo.created in Studio, just to make things perfectly clear. I'll say extends to make it not extend anything. And I see this prompt now. Do you wish to add item virtualsummit.demo.createdinstudio.cls to source control? And I'll say yes. And there's some, exp um, there's some information in the output window here where it says exported to file. And I can see that there was a 
p4 add command issued under the hood because we're using perforce. So now if I save this, I can see it's exported. If I add new properties to this class, I can see that that, when I save it, is exported out to that file. And it's exporting as UDL to a .cls file within the directories that I configured earlier. As a reminder, if I look at the sources global and the top level, so so sources, the, the root directory for this namespace is c colon slash virtual summit. Classes are exported to the CLS folder within that as UDL. And unit tests, that is classes starting with the name unit test, are exported to a different directory, still as UDL because of this backtick. So that was easy enough. I've added it to source control. I can now look at the source control menu up here and say check in. So this menu appears in a few places. There's the top bar with the menu, and you can see there's some options that are document specific. Undo add, check in, disconnect this document, diff against last, ver last version. Some of these things are grayed out. You can't, you can't actually do them right now um, because of the current state of the document, so they're just shown as grayed out. There are also some kind of namespace-wide things in here. Disconnect from perforce and reconnect to perforce. So the use case for this would be if you're talking to a remote perforce server and it's unavailable for some reason, perhaps because you're working locally and um, you're like on a plane or don't have network access, something like that, if everything is on your machine. So these don't apply to the specific document. They are kind of universal. I can also see similar options if I right click in the document itself Note that these are only the document-specific actions that are shown. And similarly, if I right-click on one of the items in the workspace view or project view, um, check out get latest in this case because this is something that's already been submitted to Perforce. So I'll go ahead and check this file in. Go to source control, check in. Uh, it is acting as me and from a perforce perspective so I can just say demo and submit it. So the way perforce works this file is now read-only on disk it's been submitted it's available to other people through perforce and if I look at this menu now I have the option to check it out. So rather than doing that I'm gonna just try to make some changes to this file and as soon as I try to do that, I, I get this prompt. Do you wish to check item virtualsummit.demo.createdinstudio.cls out from source control? And I'll say yes. I'll add a property. And then, so that's again, up oh, exported to disk. And suppose I decide I want to get rid of this change. I can then just go up to the source control menu, say undo checkout. It'll make sure I really want to do that because this is losing work after all. But yes, I really want to do that. And we can see that it goes back to the previous version and it removes my changes. So that's in Studio. All of these thing, same things will also work in Visual Studio Code, so I'll demonstrate that. First off, just a note on my Visual Studio Code configuration. I have a code workspace set up, and I can get to this if I go to workspaces, open workspace configuration file. And this allows me to define different folders that are part of the workspace. Normally this is straightforward. There are just folders on the file system that are part of the workspace. But with the VS Code object script extension, you can do something kind of cool and use this ISFS scheme to say, I have this instance defined in the server manager with a web server port to use the REST APIs for for getting documents and updating things. And I want to look at the virtual summit namespace within that. And you can see over on the left, the folder name is dev, and then within that I can see the same classes I just saw in Studio. Although there's a new one that's been added, so if I refresh now I can see created in studio.cls. So I'll demonstrate creating a new file, adding it to source control, submitting it, 
uh, checking it out again, making a change, and then reverting that change. All of this will work in Visual Studio Code as well. And the menus show up in the same place, in analogous places at least. So I'll right click dev. I'm going to add a unit test now. We'll create a new folder, unit test, and a new folder within that, virtual summit, and a new file within that. We'll call it created in VS Code.cls. And I see that same prompt. Do you wish to add item unit test.virtualsummit.created in VS Code.cls to source control? I'll say yes. And in the output window, I'll see that this was exported to that other directory, virtual summit internal testing unit tests, and a p4 add command was issued. So I'll add a method in here, test something, do cert failure, no way. And I'll save it, it'll compile to the server. Oh, well I should also extend unit test dot test case got a compilation error there and that's it so if I go if I right click I can see server source control and that'll pull up the enabled options that we saw in studio as well there's an undo add there's a check-in option and there's a document specific option if I want to get to those global options that were visible in studio I can go to view command palette and just look for server source control there it is and the document specific actions for the current document are shown as well as the outside of that context disconnect from perforce option and you can see that this is an action that's being performed on the class that i selected similarly i could right click one of these and say server source control and there's an option to add that file to source control for example so the same places the menus show up in Studio, they'll also show up in VS Code via the server source control option. There is also a server command menu because you can use these Studio extensions to do things other than just source control. And in this case, nothing shows up there, which is kind of expected because there's just a source control menu. I just note that because there may be other extensions in the community now or in the future that would be usable in that manner. Anyway, so I'll add this to source control, I'll check in, and I get the same studio extension page, I need to log in, and I can say demo adding from VS Code, I'll submit it, and I can see it's been submitted to perforce. Now if I go over here again and click server source control, there is a checkout option. If I'm lazy and I just try to make a change, I'll see the same thing as I did in Studio. Do I wish to check it out from source control? Well, yes, I do. So I'll add a method test something else. I'll assert success. It worked. I'll save that. You can see in the output window if I scroll down, that it's been exported with the new version. And actually, I didn't want to add that test, so I can go to server source control and say undo checkout. It'll offer me the same prompt. I'll say yes, I really do want to revert it. And I can see at this point that the code is reverted on the server and the changes show up in VS Code as well. So this, this concludes a simple demo of how to use the source control hooks and menu options through VS Code. It'll vary with your source control extension. They don't look all exactly the same, but they tend to follow the same patterns. So hopefully this has reassured you that as you're looking to adopt VS Code, your existing development processes will still work. As some next steps, I would advise checking out the VS Code Experience Lab for just a quick start on using Visual Studio Code. And for a more general introduction, you could see the session Visual Studio Code for Object Script ready for prime time. And if you're still trying to figure out your approach for source control, either on an existing or a new project, I'd advise attending my manager's session, Visual Studio Code for Object Script, choosing an IDE source control combination. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me over email or LinkedIn. Um, I'm sad that I won't be seeing many of you in person this year. 
but look forward to productive discussions coming out of this. Thank you.